Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Sunday, April 23rd, 2023. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's Word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Yesterday in our Old Testament reading, we heard about a day of the Lord that was coming on the entire earth. It was going to be a day of judgment for God's enemies. But as we read in uh, Isaiah chapter 25, we're going to see that this day of the Lord will also be a day of salvation for God's people. Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name for you have accomplished wonders, plans formed long ago with perfect faithfulness. For you have turned the city into a pile of rocks, a fortified city into ruins. The fortress of the barbarians is no longer a city. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, a strong people will honor you. The cities of violent nations will fear you. For you have been a stronghold for the poor person, a stronghold for the needy in his distress, a refuge from storms and a shade from heat. When the breath of the violent is like a storm against a wall, like heat in a dry land. You will subdue the uproar of barbarians. As the shade of a cloud cools the heat of the day, so he will silence the song of the violent. On this mountain, the Lord of armies will prepare for all the peoples a feast of choice meat, a feast with aged wine, prime cuts of choice meat, fine vintage wine. On this mountain, he will swallow up the burial shroud, the shroud over all the peoples, the sheet covering all the nations. When he has swallowed up death once and for all, the Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face and remove his people's disgrace from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day, it will be said, look, this is our God. We have waited for him and he has saved us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let's rejoice and be glad in his salvation. For the Lord's power will rest on this mountain, but Moab will be trampled in his place, as straw is trampled in a dung pile. He will spread out his arms in the middle of it, as a swimmer spreads out his arms to swim. His pride will be brought low, along with the trickery of his hands. The high-walled fortress will be brought down, thrown to the ground, to the dust. As we continue working through John's first letter, John shares with us an amazing truth, that we truly are God's children. As he continues to describe what that means for our lives, he's going to show that as we live as God's children, we will show that we are God's children by putting our love into action. See what great love the Father has given us, that we should be called God's children. And we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it didn't know him. Dear friends, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet been revealed. We know that when he appears, we will be like him because we will see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin practices lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed so that he might take away sins, and there is no sin in him. Everyone who re remains in him does not sin. Everyone who sins has not seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The one who commits sin is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. The Son of God was revealed for this purpose, to destroy the devil's work. Everyone who has been born of God does not sin. Because his seed remains in him, he is not able to sin because he has been born of God. 
This is how God's children and the devil's children become obvious. Whoever does not do what is right is not of God, especially the one who does not love his brother or sister. But this is the message you have heard from the beginning. We should love one another, unlike Cain, who was of the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his deeds were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers and sisters. The one who does not love remains in death. Everyone who hates his brother or sister is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. This is how we have come to know love. He laid down his life for us. We should also lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has this world's goods and sees a fellow believer in need, but withholds compassion from him, how does God's love reside in him? Little children, let us not love in word or speech, but in action and in truth. This is how we will know that we belong to the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows all things. Dear friends, if our hearts don't condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive whatever we ask from him because we keep his commands and do what is pleasing in his sight. Now this is his command, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps his commands remains in him, and he in him. And the way we know that he remains in us from the Spirit is from the Spirit he has given us. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.